No! Um, first, got a new car. <laughs> well, it's not new, but it's new to me. So that's exciting. But, um, today I wanted to talk about deliverance and freedom and what that actually means. Obviously, if you read the title of the video, that's what this video is about. <laughs> but, um, I think just because there's a very big difference in what we're taught about deliverance or being saved is in Christ and then also what freedom is. And I want to help people understand that more to, uh, to somewhat of, of how I understand it using the scriptures and um, just experiences as well. Um, people often, th when, so deliverance is, is um, Christ saving people. And so when, when people talk about deliverance, often they talk about when you come to Christ and he saves you, then you're just, you know, life is just supposed to be easy and you're not supposed to, to struggle with things that you used to or, or you're just going to kind of be able to just be strong in everything and, and you're not going to make mistakes apparently and, and all of that. But that's not deliverance. That's not the gospel. <laughs> the gospel is all about repentance and becoming better. So if nothing was hard, if we didn't have anything to to improve on, then what would the point of the gospel be? Um, and so, actually, learning about this, um, Jackie Hill Perry, she has a video. I've watched so many, I don't know which one anymore. But she has one where she talks about deliverance and how it's not God taking away everything. It's a change of state or a change of direction of of where you're at. So. She gives the example of um, of the Israelites in Egypt when they were slaves to the Egyptians and they were delivered, God delivered them into the wilderness and out of Egypt. And they were not, their lives were not made easy, but they, they were taken away from that and changed to, to a different direction. And, and something important is that the direction that, that we, we turn to when we are delivered, it's not, we cannot save ourselves. We don't turn into ourselves. It's not a self-reflection thing that we're like, oh, I need to be better, so I'm just going to be better. No. We, we as human beings cannot do that. Our, our desires of our bodies and flesh and our, just our natural feelings are, are too strong just for us to have control. Um... And so the person that we turn to is Christ. We have to go to Christ if we really want to be to be healed and to be delivered from temptations or or sins that we have committed or or even the God the atonement doesn't just cover sins. It's hurt and pain and and anything that that we feel it it covers that. And so I just feel like people need to understand that deliverance, just because you still have temptations, does not mean that, that Christ does not have you, that, that you are not doing a good job at following Christ. Um, because one of the things that, that is, is apparent when we are following Christ and we are being delivered is our hearts are changed and, and the way we see things is different and so kind of just an example with that um the more that you love god and and you want to follow christ and the more the spirit is inside of you the more sin starts to not feel good um because sin does feel good what what we want as human beings it feels good even if god says it's not and so that's why we need to have the Holy Ghost to help us discern what really is good and what's not. Um, it's, it's really interesting uh, talking about in, in Romans 7. Um, with the scriptures too, I'm, I might read some stuff in these videos. 
but uh, I'm gonna start putting more in my comments or just in the description of the video because I don't just want people to watch or listen to the videos because what's the point in that? That's not that you're just listening. I want people to actually act on their faith because that's what really helps us change and learn and grow and in love and brings blessings is action. And so I, I want to, to help people with that. So I'm, I might read a little bit um, later. But in, in Romans 7, it's actually really cool because I read this a while back and I was like, that seems very just deep and poetic, but I don't necessarily get it yet. But little by little, Heavenly Father helps us understand. <laughs> so that's fun. But it talks about how our flesh, even if we want to do good, when we do not have the Spirit with us, then we we still fall into the trap of our desires and our flesh. And it's, it's I'll just, I'll, I'll read it just cause it is kind of confusing. So if people check it out, then, then they can kind of have this to go with it. Um, so I'll start, in, it's Romans seven verse 18. It says, for I know that in me, that is in my flesh, dwelleth no good thing. For to will is present with me but how to perform that which is good, I find not. So basically just our flesh, it's so hard to... So going back, we are not evil beings. We, are, we have divinity inside of us, but naturally because of the fall, we are born in sin. And so our, our natural man, our natural desires are contrary to what God has has designed and so that's why we need to be born again and through baptism and receive the holy ghost um but that that's why so when i talk about this i don't want people to think that i think that people are just evil because there's divinity inside of us we just need to to clean out um the the humanness of us and bring out the godliness in us um and so, verse 19, it says, For the good that I would, I do not. So the good that, that I, I intend to do, I, I don't do. But the evil which I would not, that I do. But the evil things that, that I don't really want to do, I do. Verse 20, Now if I do that, I would not. It is no more I that do it, but sin that dwelleth in me. So this is kind of where freedom comes in. So, in our world today, freedom, people think of freedom as just doing whatever you want to do. And it, I think this is a good thing, so I should be allowed to do it, and that, that's freedom. I, I'm going to feel free because I can do whatever I want to, and no one's going to tell me that something is wrong. And so, something interesting here is we learn how freedom is being in the Holy Ghost, having the Holy Ghost with us to love God and to be able to choose him, to have the power inside of us from Jesus Christ to choose the right. And, and people, people, I don't know, pe people have a hard time thinking that there is a right and a wrong, but there is. And, and so, um, just kind of with the, the freedom thing. Um, and in verse 21, it says, I find then a law that when I would do good, evil is present with me. 22, for I delight in the law of God after the inward man. 23, but I see another law in my members, warring against the law of my mind and bringing me into captivity to the law of sin, which is in my members. So this, this warring that he has, this war inside of him that he has, because he wants to do good, but there's there's this when we aren't focused on Christ and 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 our love for God, then we are are so captured in our flesh and our desires that that it's hard to really do good, and and this is where that war comes in. Because we, we all are born with the Spirit of Christ. This is something that I want to talk about later too. Is the difference between the Spirit of Christ and the actual gift of the Holy Ghost. We are all born with the Spirit of Christ in us. And a lot of people just call that our conscience. 
Um, and a lot of people's consciences have been, what's the word? Um, when you don't feel anything anymore, uh, damaged, I can't remember the word. Okay. <laughs> but I hope people get what I'm saying. That, that just, they don't, they have a hard time feeling that they're right and wrong. It's, man, if someone comes up with that word, <laughs> please write it in the comments. But, um, but yeah it's it's this this battle and so we we know what's good and we know what's wrong but we we do what's wrong more because it's easier because it, that's natural for us because it feels good to our bodies and 24 um this this verse kind of goes along with second nephi chapter 4 where nephi is just just kind of crying out and i have read this chapter so much because I have felt this so much especially in the last year and a half um, but just verse 24 in Romans 7 he says O wretched man that I am who shall deliver me from the body of this death I thank God through Jesus Christ our Lord so then with the mind I myself serve the law of God but with the flesh the law of sin so I really love that because it's it's really just when when we want God and Christ and when we when we truly are thinking about them and, and we have them in our view then we're able to to choose the right um, through power and what kind of led me to those scriptures was um, Galatians 5 verse 17 it says for the flesh lusteth uh, against the spirit and the spirit against the flesh and these are contrary the one to the other so that ye cannot do the things that you would so that kind of goes back with the freedom thing right so it talks about the 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 good versus evil the spirit of god um is is pushing against our flesh and and at the end it says so that ye cannot do the things that you would so this is where captivity comes in where the more we sin or do things contrary to what God has said is good, then the more distant the Holy Ghost is from us, the more distant God is from us. And so then we have less power to walk in the Spirit and to do good. And so that's why it's it's so crucial to, to have the Holy Ghost. And I really just, I know with all my heart that if if we were to help people understand this concept, that, that if they want to be free, that it's not in doing whatever they want to do. That's not going to lead to freedom. Freedom is going to be walking in the Holy Ghost and choosing God. And, and that's, it's going, how this applies to real life is, is this. If you are addicted to something and, and you simply just go to worldly things to help with that, you're you're really we're, we're we're all we're doing is taking one addiction and one idol something that is replacing god and turning it into another thing that we're using to replace god because god is the only thing that really fills us and changes us and makes us whole so if we if we really want to help people then we are going to give them god and jesus christ and and that's one thing that, that, that people think, people are so scared of God. Like You mentioned God and people are just so scared. They're so scared of prayer. But here's the thing, like God is so good. <laughs> he's so merciful and loving and he's perfect in everything. And, and when we say he's perfect and, and perfectly loving and merciful, it's not that he's going to just let you do whatever you want because if you were to do that that wouldn't be love because he knows that that leads to slavery to your sins to your temptations he he's not going to just let us go into into that life that's not love um if we if we really love people and god really loves us and so he tells us the truth and helps us become better selves um and I really just, 
I just want to help people understand this concept a little bit more. And I hope I explained well this. Um, one thing that I was kind of feeling I should touch on is, is what if we are in the spirit? What if we're going to church and reading our scriptures and praying and we do love God so much, but we still fall into sin and temptation? And why? <laughs> And I was reading in uh, Elder Holland's talk from April 2010 called Place No More for the Enemy of My Soul. And uh, Elder Holland says, Most people in trouble end up crying. What was I thinking? Well, whatever they were thinking, they weren't thinking of Christ. Yet, as members of his church, we pledge every Sunday of our lives to take upon ourselves his name and promise to always remember him. So let us work a little harder at remembering him, especially that he has borne our griefs and carried our sorrows, that he was bruised for our iniquities, and with his stripes we are healed. Surely it would guide our actions in a dramatic way if we remember that every time we transgress, we hurt not only those we love, but we also hurt him who so dearly loves us. But if we do sin, however serious that sin may be, we can be rescued by that same majestic figure. He who bears the only name given under heaven, whereby any man or woman can be saved. When confronting our transgressions and our souls are harrowed up with true pain, may we all echo the repentant Alma and utter his life-changing cry, O oh Jesus, Thou Son of God, have mercy on me. Oh, I just really want to bear my testimony that that I know that that coming unto Christ is not the way to an easy life, but it is the way to an empowering life, a fulfilling life. And and we can't do that alone. We need people to help us. And, and sometimes it's gonna mean that people are, are gonna make hard decisions. And even if we, we wish things were different, God and his pro God's promises are, are eternal. And if he promises something, <laughs> that that promise is there but we have to do our part for it we have to want it and so I just I just want to encourage people to to not be scared of God <laughs> and to, to pray and to read the scriptures and to talk to people just, just get help <laughs> don't be ashamed of anything that you've done or anything that, that you're feeling or going through <laughs> Um, and if you need someone, you can talk to me. <laughs> I'm, I'm always here. Um, and I just, I, I know that, that the only way to true happiness is Jesus Christ. <laughs> and I say this in the name of Jesus Christ, amen.